All right. So, hey, how are you guys doing? Hugo Hernandez here from Spicy Consulting. Uh, today, I have a very special guest in my series of interviews of people that are making a difference in the uh, business industry, in the business here in Utah. So, his name is Luis Farfan. And let me tell you a little bit about him, and then you tell me about you, okay? Sounds uh, good, uh, Thank you for having about. me. Absolutely. So, Luis is a dynamic business owner who came from Guadalajara, Mexico. He loves photography and he's married and lives with his beautiful wife. So that together they have a beautiful dog. And I'd say he or she is a very important part of the family because of what I, uh, how I know you. Now yes. he's able to work with one of the most prestigious bio, biodegradable products company that use byproducts of tequila production. And that company is called Penca. Also, he, uh, for several years, he has been a distributor of Molina, a pioneer vanilla company since 1944 in Mexico. That's How are correct. you doing, Luis? I'm doing great. Uh, yeah, that's an interesting uh, synopsis there of my, of my story. Yeah, yeah. I wanted to make it a little short, uh, but at the same time, I wanted to make it uh, significant for you. So what can you tell me about all that? Well, yeah, so that's true. That's one of the reasons why I'm here in, in Salt Lake uh, is because of Molina. That was a company I was working for a while ago, and I came here to um, take over um, the distribution part in, in, in the U.S. Uh, for some reason, they decided to have uh, their main importer and, and distribution base here in Utah. That's how I came to to the this beautiful city. Um, and then after that, I decided to stay. I mean, I got an offering from from the company who was uh, importing the product, and and that's what I I, I decided to stay. And then before that, I, I I've been also involved in in the food industry. I was working for Unilever, which is a, a the food service uh, division of them. So they they do Nor, Hellman's, you know, mayo and all those spices. So I worked for them for a while. Then I had my own restaurant in guadalajara mexico so i've been always involved in in the food industry even though i'm a computer science engineer <laughs> that's, my, that's my major um that's but, that's what i knew about you actually and so you know this this live stream is um it's on inside the group restaurant for inner circle so you know but i didn't know that you had your own restaurant do you want to talk about it for, for a minute sure, what kind yeah. of restaurant was it and uh <laughs> Why did you decide to walk away from it if you did? Yeah, yeah, good question. Um, I have all the respect uh, of people in the industry owning restaurants. It's one of the hardest jobs I ever had in my life. Um, I love cooking. It's, it's one of my patients as well. So I got the opportunity to, to buy a, uh, a restaurant. Um, I was at the beginning in partnership, with, which was great. Uh, because it, it allows us, um, the three of us, it was three partners, to really work hard one entire week and then switch and become more like a customer, bring our customer base, our friends. And, and that was always keeping fresh customers and new type of customers. People will know, get to know each other there and then they bring their own uh, friends. Um, so, so it was a great time. But then my my business partner they they're from Israel and they left they went back to um to Israel and oh i see and i ended up by myself and 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 the load of work was overwhelming and i wasn't able to keep up with the restaurant and my life and my wife at the time so got it so the best got option it. was to to close it was mediterranean uh, cuisine with a twist because our chef was a uh, indian uh chef so he was bringing all these spices to uh, Mediterranean dishes. So you will have things like a regular pizza. Um, the, the base of the dough was a, a pita bread, uh, mm -hmm. like the one you might find right now in Red Rock. Uh, but then the sauce, it has some spices that made it completely different. And then just a touch of, of butter, clarified butter with fenugreek seeds. So mm -hmm. all of those little uh, changes in the ingredients make it completely different, and and people were like always looking after those flavors. Awesome. So what is it that you learned? The one thing that you learned that you would like to that you would like restaurant owners to know about your experience owning a restaurant. 
uh, that you need to keep your eyes on everything that happens there, either with uh, technology now, with cameras, or or just being there. And otherwise, uh, you need to have that close connection to um, the restaurant and the people always. Awesome, awesome. So there's a Facebook user right here that is uh, saying great story. So unfortunately, I can't see who she, who he or she is. Uh, I can show it right now on the on the screen, but uh, great story, man. That's awesome. Oh. Uh, I'm proud of you. I didn't know that you had a, a restaurant. So so now you are a distributor for a pretty cool company that uh, builds that makes should I shouldn't say build uh, that makes yeah. these biodegradable uh, products. But one of the products that you or actually I am more familiar with are the straws. What yeah. is the company? What's the mission? And what is uh, the materials that you guys use to make it? Yes. So the company in Mexico is Penca. Uh, they they are the creator of the agave fiber straw in collaboration with a, a sister company called BioSolutions. BioSolutions is the company who owns the patent of the material, uh, which is basically um, bio-based plastic derived uh, from the cellulose that you extract from the manufactured process of tequila. So when you're you're making tequila, you're basically extracting all these sugars from, from the agave plant and you end up with a bunch of cellulose as a aftermath of that process. So normally in the past, they will throw that away. It was a, a lot of waste, more than 30 tons of, of waste uh, produced by, by the, the, the industry only by one single manufacturer. Wow. Which partner with Jose Cuervo, which is the largest tequila manufacturer in the world. Uh, so we're taking all that fiber and we turn it into a bio-based plastic. Um, and with that, you can do basically what you can do with most plastics. In okay. This, mm -hmm. Go ahead. I'm sorry. In this case, we're, we're starting with, with straws and cutlery. That's kind of our main product. Um, the mission of Penca is to basically uh, create a better alternative for restaurants and people um, uh, on, a, on a biodegradable option for straws. We know paper straws, um, everyone hates them. And they're, not, they're not really a functional product anymore. They were probably 50 years ago, but now we have better technology and, and this is the alternative. This product won't dissolve in your drink. It will hold up well for weeks in, in, in your drink and even with hot uh, liquids as well. Okay. Got it. That's that's fantastic. So explain to me, please, um, as if I was a five-year-old, what's the difference between what we know as plastic straws and the plastic straws that you use, that you guys produce, should I say? Because you mentioned that uh, you, you described it as a plastic, right? Bio-based bio plastic, yeah. Bio-based plastic. What is that? So uh, plastics, uh, they're nothing else as a, th than a polymer, right? So a polymer has different, uh, well, I guess that's not a way to explain it to a five-year-old, but, <laughs> uh, but, 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 but a plastic is, is a, a, a molecule. It's, it's a, a combination of different carbon uh, atoms and they form a chain. And the longer the change uh, is and more complex, it's harder to break and return it to the earth. So our polymers that are cellulose based, that are bio-based, they're more simple and and the soil and all the elements around you can break them down to a point that they biodegrade. They, they, they break down the, the carbon molecules mm -hmm. uh, uh, and that's something you cannot do with very complex ones like the plastic ones. So- Got it. Would you say that plastic the regular plastic that we use, that we know, it takes many years to go back to nature to disintegrate. Yeah. And the bioplastic that you guys use, it how long does it take? Years. One year. Between one and five years, depending on the conditions on the environment. But yeah. So yeah, I was reading the other day. Think, that about, think about a piece of wood. You see the piece of wood, and it will if you if you leave the piece of wood in the in the soil in your garden and you never move it it will take around one or two years and then you suddenly you won't see it exactly um, 
so that's kind of uh, the same the same process that our straws uh, will go through. Awesome, perfect. So that's fantastic. So that, the company is called Penka, right? Should we go ahead and, and, and show it real quick to sure. our viewers? Okay. Yes. So really quick, and and then we're gonna go over here. And uh, what we're, uh, what are we looking at right here? Well, th this is our um, website. This is the the main page, and and that's kind of our slogan. I was a plan um, straw. Let's drink to that. Um, and 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 you can see a couple of publications there um, in in those magazines or websites. Then we have uh, our catalog of products. It's uh, basically a picture with uh, with a cocktail of suggestion of use, and and then. Um, the actual product, the application. Um, you have, you that's, guys that's have toothbrushes that we just released. It's a biodegradable agave toothbrush as well. So again, as I was telling you at the beginning, uh, the straws is just the tip of the iceberg. Uh, we can we can do basically whatever you can do with plastic. We can do it with our product with with the advantages of being biodegradable. Awesome. Also, very important to mention, it's lighter than plastic. So when you're applying our material to things like auto parts or um, in the aerospace industry, you're taking weight out of the actual vehicle. Mm -hmm. That means less energy consumption because you're moving a lighter uh, vessel. So so also less pollution, less less energy consumption, less gas. So awesome. that's very important as well. Let's talk about this. What is this? Well, that's great. That's actually your website uh, that you you built for us, uh, Spicy Consulting. We're we're a customer of Spicy Consulting, Thank and um, this is a pilot that we're doing in the state of Utah, where the idea is to target uh, bar owners and customers uh, in in the realm of uh, the food industry that would like to uh, receive samples of our product, so they can go uh, to the website, just answer a very quick survey. I think it's three questions only. And um, you schedule some time with us, and and we'll go and deliver um, um, the straws. So you yeah. can you can use them, you can try them, and then we 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 have distribution through the main two distributors here in the state, which is Nicholas and and Cisco. So if if you work with them, you most likely be able to uh, buy our products through them, or not. You, we can do it directly as well. Awesome. So people can uh, request a free sample, right? So what is the, uh, the process of you delivering a, a sample? Are you a, more of a sales kind of person or are you just someone that goes and drops off the, uh, the sample and educates the customer? What is it that you do in that, in that area? Yeah, yeah, just, it's just basically deliver the sample, answer questions that the customer may have. And if they have interest on, on on buying them i will just point to the right person again that's what we're suggesting um to go through any of our distributors if you really want to buy the the product we're not there to to close a sale or try to push them to buy anything it's just for you to receive the sample use them and answer any question you might have awesome awesome perfect so let me go ahead and Get back to us, and uh, I think that was very interesting and uh, very educational for our viewers. So thank you very much for that. So let's talk about something else. Uh, you have a pretty cool hobby, and uh, do you want to talk about it? What is it besides photography? Yeah, I like photography, and then you can see here my my microphone. Um, I have a, a podcast. Um, nothing related with food. Nothing related with um, technology or anything. It's just basically music. I play every week um, a different theme, um, different type of, of music, and the, actually the name of the of the podcast is Eclectico, which means eclectic. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's a, a variety of, of music. We we talk about um, the songs, uh, history about it. It's, uh, you you were barely listening to me. It's, uh, I'm I'm doing very small intervention there. It's just basically for me to have the chance to play the music that I like. And explore music that I've never heard before, and and do it together. That's you. You can hear me uh, through Spotify, and and uh, just look for Eclectico, and or Luis Farfan, and and you you'll find me there. Awesome. So uh, another question that I have is this: What is Luis Farfan's mission? Oh wow, that's that's a very deep question, and I think <laughs> people normally they don't think uh, 
Uh, they're they they're not expecting to receive that kind of question in 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 a live session like this. <laughs> um, how, I mean, my personal mission is 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 trying to be as happy as I can and and be in in balance with my environment, with my the people surrounding me, and and try to you know spread that happiness. That's how I think that's kind of my my mission, just to just to to be happy, go through this life, and try to leave uh, something positive behind. I think mm -hmm. that that's that's kind of my mission. I think. Awesome! It's good to hear that. That that really is. And uh, what would be the, your best advice to someone that is starting a business here in Utah? Um, just be patient. Uh, uh, we we just talked about that yesterday, Hubi. How many yes. times we thought about just throwing the towel and uh, and you just need to go back to the settle and 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 keep riding that bull. It's it's not it's not easy. I mean, just like it's not easy to have a job and and go every day to an employer and you know, uh, follow the rules of co or corporate America, that's not easy either. So the same thing here. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, the reward is bigger, I think, uh, at least for, for the people who like to be uh, conducting their own business and, and mandating their own schedules and times. But that also uh, turned into, you know, the, you need, you, you're on vacation and then suddenly you need to take a phone call because no one else will do it. If but there's not. nothing wrong with that, I would say. No, <laughs> but that, that's reality. And then, yeah. but some people who work for uh, for companies, uh, I, I guess they ca they have the chance to completely separate their business. You know, I'm on vacation. I'm not picking my uh, picking up my phone or anything. It's it's just it's just me and my family, right? Got it. You don't have that kind of flexibility when you're uh, a business owner. Uh, but, but, what about so, so re resilience? Mm -hmm. That that's that's my my resilience. suggestion. Awesome, yeah. Always remember why you're doing what you're doing. Now, um, what about you and I are immigrants. We both came from Mexico. What would you say to someone like us when they're starting a business in, in Utah? Uh, I, I, won't, I won't put any, any type of difference. I mean, I think we have uh, the same opportunities. That's one of the amazing things about this country is that if you work hard, it, uh, the the field is somehow the same. Um, of course, there's like a language barrier, and and you will face uh, different challenges. Um, but again, everyone will face some kind of challenge when they're uh, starting a business. So I will probably suggest the same thing: uh, be resilient, uh, have very clear in mind what you want, what's your goal in in your business, and 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 you will be successful. Awesome. So I have a surprise for you. Um, a question, surprise for you. Okay. And I know that you're, you're going to be able to, to answer it, but it, uh, I'm just going to go ahead and, and, and ask you. Uh, it's not bad, but uh, what would you say to, um, what advice would you give to a 15-year-old Luis Farfan? <laughs> um, you know what? It's funny. Uh, uh, I guess uh, <laughs> wait to get married. Don't be so eager to get married. That's okay. the, that's the, probably the question that I will I will give to myself. Okay, good, good, good to know. Uh, the last question that I have is this: um, What is it that? What are the differences that you see here in Utah in the food and beverage industry mm -hmm. compared to other places that you've been? Well. Um, we're a little bit behind the rest of the country, uh, which it's understandable. I mean, we have a culture and and, and a way of th see things uh, completely different. Just regulations and everything that uh, our state has is is completely alien to other states. So the fact that we have a, a limited amount of um, licenses uh, according to population is it's is something that it's not it's not common and that put us on on a different um field category uh -huh. yeah yeah so but i guess um the other thing is that we're becoming more and more a hop uh more and more uh, a touristic uh place where people come uh to stay and visit or to go somewhere else like yellowstone and all these beautiful national parks that we have here 
Um, so, so we're, we're starting to to move up, move on 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 this industry. We can see now a couple of new restaurants that they're coming from Vegas. So I think that's 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 what I'm expecting to to see the future um, in 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 the in the industry here. Uh, a lot of uh, restaurants in Vegas they will see the opportunity here in Salt Lake and they will start moving here and opening uh, uh, their their own places uh, here in Salt Lake City with their own flair and version of it. Um, mm -hmm. And that will also create more opportunities for other restaurants to explore things that they they probably never thought that it was possible in the state. So so it's promising, but we're a little bit behind. That's that's yeah. how I feel. Yeah, I agree with you. Um, another thing, uh, who is your customer for Penka? Well, anybody who uses straw right now. Okay, perfect. Uh, I mean, if, if you use cutlery, if you use a straw, uh, you, you, you can be a potential customer of us. And where can we find Penka products right now? Oh, no, let me rephrase that. Who is using your, your products right now, as in uh, bars and restaurants? Oh, so specific customers like Lake Effect, um, Whole Pass, um, Ocker. I mean, we, we have a variety of, of um, customers. Uh, mm -hmm. They're buying through, again, Nicholas and, and, and Cisco. Mm -hmm. And then end users also buying from, um, from, from our website, yeah. The retail right now it's only available via our website um we're working right now to get into kroger and and some other retailers including uh whole foods but at this time um i mean we're kind of a new company here we started in uh, may of last year uh and then we had COVID in the middle <laughs> um, yes so 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 that kind of uh delay a little bit of our go-to-market um <clears throat> plans but yeah, if you're interested, go to penka.us, and uh, and that's that's a, a good way to contact us, and and we can we can uh, send you product directly to your house. Absolutely, as a sample. So if you are interested about uh, contacting Luis, his phone number is right here at the bottom of the of the screen, and uh, contact him through penka.us. But uh, thank you very much, Luis, and it's been a pleasure having you on my. A uh, series of uh, interviews, and uh, we'll see you later. Is that okay? Yeah, perfect. Thank All you right. for the time. Thank you very much, you guys. See you Take later. Care. Have a great, uh, a great weekend.